The first tweet is called Burn the Witch. Burn the Witch. Outrage culture is a modern religion. As with traditional religions, it has prophets, disciples, and martyrs. Disciples are essentially moralists. Moralists that create martyrs by following the words and actions of prophets. Grasping for control in their often agency bereft lives. And the secondary tweet, the sister tweet to that one is called Witch Hunting. Outrage culture is a modern religion. As with traditional religions, it has prophets, disciples, and martyrs. Disciples are essentially moralists that create martyrs by following the teachings of prophets, seeking order and purpose in their often agency bereft lives. So let's break it down. As I said, outrage culture is a modern religion. In the vacuum left by, and again, outrage culture is not necessarily secular or non-secular, but in the context of modern religion, we can say, you know, when, when there's a vacuum left in somebody's life, a vacuum of meaning, purpose, and order, and perhaps they're seeking some sort of moral virtue, they want to make a positive change, a positive impact. And I do have a video out, Outrage Culture is a Modern Religion. When they want to make a positive impact, getting outraged, pointing to something, and, and engaging in this act of moral panic could provide a little bit of that, that dopamine hit, that that purpose, that, that meaning that drives them, that guides them, and drives them forward and helps them develop in their morality and their sense of you know, their positive impact on the world. So I don't necessarily think it's a bad thing, but I do think we all understand outrage culture has gotten so saturated. Every, every, there, every time something happens, somebody's outraged over it. And they're usually outraged on behalf of somebody else right? It's true. How often is somebody outraged over something they're usually looking out for somebody else? And again, that's egalit it's egalitarian, and it's very, it's very giving, it's very generous, it's very thoughtful, but it can get overbearing. So, as with traditional religions, this modern religion has prophets, disciples, and martyrs. I do have a video out and it was recently uploaded to BitChute, a selection of modern religions. So you can go in there and check out more about this framing of ideology and belief systems under my name of modern religion. So prophets are the ones that spread the gospel, as it were. They spread the word about what you should be outraged over. What They even might even say, this is what you should be outraged about. Disciples fall in, they just go along with it, they express, they put their hatred, their aggression towards it, and they say, well, I don't like this. Now, sometimes it's something that is truly controversial, but other times they're just offended. And it's not their right not to be offended. <laughs> we all are offended. I mean, literally, pattern recognition, our choices, the free will, the irrational free will that we express and the rational free will of the world. I mean, we always organize the world by patterns and we pick the things that are good and try to exorcise the things that are bad. Um, so there is always this sort of like, we, ha we have a, a world where there is a consensus, there is a general public belief that certain things are good and certain things are not going to be helpful. They are immoral, they are harmful to society. So, you have your disciples that follow, you have your martyrs that don't follow, that don't subscribe to the outrage. But disciples are essentially moralists that create martyrs by following the words and actions of prophets. Disciples of the modern religion of outrage culture are just moralists. They believe that there is a harm. Now, maybe they're doing it for fun. Maybe there isn't a substantive reason for it. It can go either way, as with many of the things I say in this video. They are just observations, they're just, they have their bias. 
But these are people that are trying to tell you, they're trying to enact real-world moralism in their search for universal truth, and they're telling you what is good and what is evil. And they usually do it based on what the experts are saying, the prophets, as it were. And I do say seek subject matter experts, but sometimes people can create controversy for all kinds of reasons. Sometimes controversies are created just for clicks. That's how the entire media macro simulation works. It's designed so that money is generated. You create a controversy, you drive people to have an interest in it, they want to click, they advertisers advertisers pay their money, they get their money through uh, advertising products and services. It's all a system. When I talk about the modern religion of institutions or outrage culture, any of these, it's all about follow the money. Follow the money. Um, so there's certainly that aspect to it. But these people are grasping for control. They're looking for purpose, control, meaning, order in their often agency bereft lives. Now, Jordan Peterson says, clean your home before you tell others to clean theirs. That's a paraphrase, but if you've read 12 Rules or any of his other books, Maps of Meaning, I have not read that one, but he talks about, you know, people have should have their own individual agency. We do advocate for individualism and independent thought on this channel. But... Sometimes when people don't have any control over their own life, when they don't have any control, they'll grasp, they will reach out to what they can control, what they can point to and have some say over. They will reach out and in the absence of any other thing in their life, they can't even control their own lives. They can't, you know, they can't control their work. They can't control their family, but they can certainly complain. They can certainly get outraged and say, you know what? Here's my stand. This is outrageous. It should be removed. It should be demonized. It should be, we should be afraid of it. We should be panicked. I say moral panic is a modern religion, very similar to outrage culture. Um, but they're looking to have some kind of moral control. They're pointing to things that they believe are harmful or immoral. And they're saying, well, this isn't good, you know. And they might be right, or they might be wrong, but I don't want to place faith over reason and get trapped in just going with the herd, going with the groupthink, going with the hive mind mentality that we discussed earlier in the video, where people just get outraged and they honestly can forget why. So witch hunting, same thing. Disciples are moralists that follow the teacher, the teachings of prophets. Somebody has to start it. Somebody has to start the outrage. They have to point to something and say, well, this isn't right. Again, they might be right or they might be wrong. But frankly, I think that we've reached a point where, again, the, the answers lie between. And sometimes things change. Different points in time, different values matter more. So, you know, what's outrageous now, what morally panics us now, in 20 or 30 years, as moralism runs in cycles, people will go, how did you, why did you people ever, why was there anybody that was ever bothered or offended or outraged by that? You look back to the satanic panic, you look back to violent video games, doom, because of the Columbine shootings, you look at Marilyn Manson and heavy metal, Blue Oyster Cults and Led Zeppelin, The Beatles, everything. People always have, and I have a video, Future Panic, check it out, where I talk about how moralism runs in cycles. And frankly, we're always evolving. We're always progressing forward, progressing into the future. And the things, you know, things, new things challenging things, things that challenge the status quo, are often the subjects of outrage culture. They're the things that people, they don't understand, so they fear. They don't fully get it. It's new. It's, it can be scary. It's unknown. It's a new frontier. 
you know, and those that are more, you know, perhaps creative or innovatively minded or open minded, they're willing to explore, they're willing to take those first steps and advocate for these new things and see that like, well, if you assume the people don't have, if you assume the people are as agency bereft or as you are, if they're as agency bereft as you are, yeah, you can might you might say that there's there's pogroms out there, there's stochastic terrorism, there are things where oh if if my child views this movie or listens to this song or plays this game, they're just going to start committing immoral evil acts. And I say possibly, but maybe you should focus on parenting. You know, maybe you should instill those values, you should explain those things that you find so outrageous to your child. You know, get in there early, let them know what what you think of it, so that the other people out there influencing them don't give them the wrong idea. I don't want to point it all to parents. <laughs> there are so many influences in our lives, media, school, friends, family. Parents only have so much influence over their children, but I think they need to, in this in, in this world, of daycare and people, kids being given iPads super early in life and having access to the internet, I think it's more important than ever that parents are engaged with their child's education. Uh, may it be uh, their actual schooling or their social education, their worldly education. So, disciples of the modern religion of outrage culture seek order and purpose and they're often agency bereft lives. One more time, could be just outraged for fun, could be shit posting, could be doing whatever. This isn't a, this is all general statements here. This isn't any sort of indictment. Uh, I am agnostic to this modern religion, but I do believe that if people are addicted to jumping from outrage to outrage, well, clearly they're looking to enact some kind of real-world moralism and find order and purpose in the process. <laughs>